Chantal and Stevo, thank you so much for joining us. Now, I came across your account on Instagram because a friend of mine that I follow commented on the little video that you posted marking the journey that you've taken and why you did what you did some five years ago. And she said she'd been following you right from the start. And I thought, how have I missed five years of this great adventure? But I'm happy to be speaking to you now. Uh, for those who have not come across your, um, your content online, explain to us what you decided to do uh, while both working in advertising here in Johannesburg some five years ago. Yes. Um, well, it's been a journey, I can tell you that. Thank you for having us, first of all. Yes. Um, we actually left on a sabbatical almost five and a half years ago. Yeah. It was just meant to be for a year, and we just wanted creative reinvigoration, and we wanted to change our daily routines, and we turned it into a lifestyle, and we just started making money on the road, and we thought this was what we want to do, so we continued to do it. Um, and now, from what I understood, I mean, I, I, I saw a few articles that were written about you in your first year of travel, because that's all really it was going to do, uh, going to be at the start. And you came up with this concept of taking photos and holding up little boards saying how far from Johannesburg you are, and that's how far from home uh, you were. And it wasn't always rosy. I mean, uh, and that's the problem with social media, isn't it? People, we most often put positive, beautiful things out on social media. But the reality of it was there was some hard work in, in between. Chantal, if you could perhaps uh, give us an idea of some of the jobs that you did in that, those first couple of years, um, uh, just to make sure you had enough money to keep traveling. Yes, yeah, so um, I mean, a lot of the work that we did was volunteer work, most of it in our first two years. And it was in exchange for accommodation and food. And we would pretty much do whatever they needed to. So we worked at a husky lodge in, uh, at the top of Norway. And we had to look after 70 husky puppies and, of course, all the poop that came with it. <laughs> and we moved on to Sweden and had to look after a campsite there, which, you know, we did some dirty jobs while we were there. Maybe it involved uh, scrubbing a few <laughs> toilets and things like that. So it definitely wasn't rosy. But no, we embraced we it, though. Do. Yeah, we embraced it and we wanted to get out of our comfort zones. That was the whole purpose of the project. So it... It worked out well for us. And obviously, as we told our story, uh, more and more people gained interest. And, and yeah, from there, I guess our skills as photographers and filmmakers kind of blossomed. And that's how we started making money. So if you want to see the world, you must be ready to scrub a couple of toilets and clean some dishes <laughs> along the way, right? Um, so that sounded like you were going like a Boeing, pardon the pun. Um, I really just came up with that right now. Um, and then uh, COVID-19 and the pandemic comes along and 2020 screeches to a halt, quite literally, for people like you and the business that you were able to carve for yourself. Um, how did you come to terms with what was now going to be your 2020 as opposed to what you'd planned? Yes, I mean, it's, it's been tough, uh, as everyone can imagine, um, but we have just tried to see it as a blessing in a way that we can actually stay grounded in one place. We needed to stay positive, and we've worked on things that we haven't had time to work on for the last uh, few years. So we're getting some stuff done, and we just try trying to stay positive. Yeah, and we're also we're focusing heavily on local tourism. So being bound in South Africa, as Steve said, has been a bit of a blessing because we're getting mm -hmm. to see and explore places that we wouldn't have otherwise seen. So, like for example, we just came back from the Northern Cape, so that was amazing, and we plan on seeing more and more of South Africa over the next year or so. And how has that affected your business plans? Because your lifestyle and the, your passion that you have been able to live out of the last few years has also become your business. Correct. Yeah, I mean, we, we always believe that creativity can solve anything. So we have found a way to make it work. And we worked on a travel from home series recently. And we are still working with a few international clients. But of course, we'll be hoping to find a few local clients to work with us in the tourism industry. And, you know, we, we just want to try and support as many small businesses as well. So we have some ideas in the pipeline. And 
hopefully we can we can all help each other out where we can. And now, Steve, just in closing, because we have run out of time, unfortunately. I mean, we've been speaking to tourism authorities in South Africa um, uh, in an extended fashion over the last few months, because they also, like you, they need to pivot their business. I mean, we depend uh, on the pounds and the euros and the, the dollars that our overseas visitors bring in so that they can stay in the fancy places and the fancy lodges that South Africa does also offer. But they now, ha they now have to turn to their domestic travelers, who are the only ones that they can depend on. Uh, what would you, your um, advice be to those in the tourism industry who now realize that they cannot just take local travelers for granted? Well, I think it's something that everyone needs to do. I think, like I said before, it is a blessing. And hopefully all of us get to see places in South Africa that we haven't seen before. And to everyone working in the tourism industry, we just got to keep our heads up and keep pushing because people want to see South Africa, including our own people. It's a beautiful country, so let's go out and do it. Yeah, and let's collaborate. I think I mean, that's also, that's also key. Let's all work together to, to get through this. Collaborate indeed is what all the cool kids are saying. Thank you so much. Um, Chanel Cartel and Steve O'Dernberger, uh, their uh, social media accounts and their website is called How Far From Home. And if you want to just escape from where you are on your phone right now, go and have a look at some of their adventures with some beautiful photos and videos that they've put together, but also quite um, honest about what they've had to do to ensure that they can live out their dreams and see the world.